Hello, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless. And today I'm going to show you how to create this embroidery without using any photographs. In other words, we'll be creating it from scratch. So let's get started. So here's the original, and I'm just going to hide that right now. So let's do some lettering. Uh, I'll pick a nice red color. Maybe a brighter red, I don't know. How about like that? And we'll choose Aerial Rounded Bowl. You can choose any type. There's a lot of fancy types. I'm choosing Aerial just to simplify it because you need to just learn the techniques. You can put any kind of font in this. So we'll type digitally, all caps. Ah. <laughs> Fearless. And I'll keep it right there. It's centered. That looks pretty good. Maybe we'll even give it a little bit more height. Okay. So we're going to duplicate those letters. So that's Control or Command J. We'll duplicate that layer. And on the second layer, we're going to choose Filter. I'm sorry. We're going to choose Layer live filters, half tone filter. And now we'll change uh, the settings in here. We don't want dots, we want lines. And let's give it an angle, I don't know. Let's try 300. We'll make these really, really small. Maybe that's too small. Let's give it a six. And I want this really high up the contrast, really high. You must be sure that you are viewing in 100% to get the idea of what you need. And since this is in front of the, uh, the original letters, instead of normal, we pick, I'm going to choose darken, which will show the red stitching through. And I think I want to, stitching is never perfect like that. So I will add noise. You know what? Before I add noise, let's go to effects. And let's choose 3D. And there's a subtle 3D. I don't want too much. Um, let's see. Maybe is that good? A little bit like that. And soften it a little. And then an outer shadow. We can give it. I'm going to go, since the 3D looks like the light is coming from the top, I'm going to make the shadow on the bottom. And we may have to change this radius later when I add the outside stitching, but we will see, or the offset. So for now, I'm just going to give it a barely anything, even less than that. That looks good. Okay, we'll close that. And stitching does look too uniform. So let's try, hmm, layer, live filter. Do we have it in here? I'm not really sure. Yep, add noise filter. So let's add some noise to this. Let's see what we're doing first, how much noise we're adding, which means if I go down the line here, you could see some differences, very, very little. But I just want to see where it'll show up. Okay, for now, let's use contrast just to see how much noise gets added. And when you think there's enough, little bit of noise, in fact, I might even try uniform. I think that's even better. And so now, after we got that little bit of noise, I would say luminosity. See. The, Let's do luminosity, and you can see the difference. It's a slight difference, but that's without it looks too fake, and you add this, and threads have noise in them, so I added noise. So now we're done with that. Now it comes a little bit of a tricky part. I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to duplicate, just in case I want to keep the original letters, so I'm going to duplicate the letters again, 
that's control or command J and turn off the one below it. So now that we have the letters selected, the layer here, we want to convert. These are this is text. We want to convert it to curves. So let's hit, click convert to curves. And the reason we want to convert it to curves is now, even though just ignore that they're all separate, you can always change the shapes. I've done that in another tutorial, but we want converted to curves so that we can change colors from here. For example, curves now can change colors from this section, but I don't want any color. I want it to be none, and I want the stroke. For now, I'm just going to pick any color. So let's pick that and then go into the stroke section and t change it to stitching and you can't really see it right now so I'm going to try and bring it up I, I, now remember this is going to be behind the original letters so you might want to bring it up pretty high and I think for the stitching I'm going to use I don't know maybe let's say four and two. Now that might not work. In other words, it's saying this is four times and this, this is two times space. So that's how long four and then two is. But we can change that later. And I'm also going to change the color later. But first, let's see what it looks like when we put the letters on it. So that looks a little bit too much to me. And I'm only trying to make the letters look um, bumpy at the edges because stitching doesn't look the same at the edges. No, I don't like that either. So maybe we'll make this even higher. Maybe five and two. Five and one maybe. Let's do four and one. It's experimental and it depends on the size and I think that works. So now we're going to change the color to, to one of the darker shades because that's what it would look like on the edges. Let's pick maybe one of the shadows and we'll choose that color. And that's your stitching. And I think it might still be a little too much. Let me look at it, make sure I'm doing 100%. I am. All right, so I'm going to try again. It's trial and error at this point. Uh, we could just bring down the size of the stitch. There we go. I think, oh, there we go. I like that right there. Two point. I like that. All right. So, okay. So now we have that, which uh, we need to now put a background in. So let's just, we're done with that. So let's group that. Let's control or command G and we'll call this letters. Now remember, you can do color overlay on all of this and change colors, but for now, let's just keep that. Now below it, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to pick kind of a denim blue and we could change that later. Just pick any color. I'm just guessing right now and we're going to fill that layer with the blue and we're going to duplicate that layer and we're going to again we're going to do um, layer live filter layer and half tone and we want to change that again to lines now we don't want it to be exactly the same as the previous one so I'm going to bring it way down this time. Maybe, maybe that's maybe a four. And we'll change the angle on that. Let me see where we want to change it to. That looks good because it's an opposite angle. And we have to decide um, oh, wait a minute. I did make a mistake. That's why it's not looking right. I created, let's, let's get rid of that. No, I won't even, I'm just going to hide that. 
leave the blue. I forgot to duplicate the denim layer, the blue layer. So I duplicated it. And I'll turn and I'll get rid of this half tone from the layer below. So I'm just leaving the color and then let's turn the half tone back on. All right. So now let's go back into here and let's try our different modes. We'll go down the line. There's darken. You can choose whichever one you want. You like a light denim, you like a dark denim, you like a washed out. So I'm just going down the line and you see what you like. I'm looking, let's see. Wow, look at all the different denim looks. I think I'm going to go with, hmm, I'm going to go with color, color burn. I like color burn. It's a nice darkness. So let's leave that. And now the last thing we need to do here, let's move it down, is on top of the, in fact, we'll put these two together. We'll group it and call it denim. And now we'll create over the denim. We're going to create, we're going to take a shape tool and make a rectangle around it. Okay. And it's not showing anything because it's blue. So let's change this to some kind of an orange color, a nice bright orange. And let's change the stitching a little bit different. Let's go two and then two spaces. And I like that. And now we'll duplicate that, another control or command J and we'll bring, I'm holding shift as I pull up. So the bottom and the top are the same and I'm doing it again here. And there you go. So you're talking about creating embroidery from scratch, not using any photos. Now don't get me wrong. If you use embroidery photos, you probably get a more realistic look, but I just think this is a good exercise to show you all the different things Affinity Photo can actually do. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and have a good day.